So previously we have considered uh, how to apply the, the Coase's integral theorem to various kind of uh, simplest kind of integrals with the residue. So there is a second formula, course integral formula, which is uh, if we have uh, some closed curve, and if there are poles, various orders. Then this integral is nothing but 2 pi i residue of f, z, n. So this is probably the most important result of uh, the complex variable we learned so far. <coughs> and for the last quiz, actually one of the cases was 2 pi a plus b cosine theta d theta. This is one of those problems that can be transformed into this form, right? So we are going to spend more time for various kind of integrals using this called integral formula. <laughs> so the and residue is is defined already, but let's try to, I think, it's time to copy of the result. I like to go as slowly as possible. So if FZ has a single pole, Sometimes it's called a simple pole at z equals z zero. That means it's infinite, but it's finite, right? For example, the residue F C naught is simply defined as F C. So for example, 
if fz is given by z minus 1, z minus 2, and if I ask to find residue of z equal 1. So how many pores, I mean, this fz has? It has uh, z equal to 1 is also pole, right? But z is 2 is also pole. Because when you substitute z equal to 1, the denominator becomes 0. So it becomes infinite, right? And so it has a pole. And if we substitute z equal to 2, it's again denominator is 0, so it becomes infinite. And if I ask to find z equal to 1, then you just take the limit. Minus 1. If I ask you to find the pole at the other place, residue F2, simply in this case, C minus 2FC is is 1, right? So very easy to find. When FC is 1 over sine Z, obviously Z is 0 is pole, right? So we can see that Z equals to 0, FZ is infinite. So Z is 0 is a pole. And ZFC sine Z over Z. In this case, we can apply L'Hopital's rule, right? So we have learned when you can use and I derived the formula for L'Hopital's rule the other day. So, for example, if z goes to z0, fc is 0, and z is z0, gz is 0, then gz or fc is simply f prime z0, g prime z0, right? That's the Ropital's rule. And So if we apply this rule, ZFC sine Z or Z is 1 over cosine 0 is 1, right? But it does have many other poles too. For example, F C is one over sine Z also has a pole at C equal sine and pi is zero, right? So it is actually Z equal plus minus pi plus minus E pi zero plus minus some 3 pi, all 0, all poles. So the residue of pi is z goes to pi, z minus pi times sine z. And in this case, what happens? 
It's a cosine pi over 1, right? It's minus 1. So residue can have a different value for whenever, when c becomes 0 or pi or whatever. And there's a very neat formula that you can use when fz is something like a tz over nz and has a simple pore, pore of order 1 at z equal to z naught. Then in this case, okay. Residue f z naught is actually z equal to z zero, t zero, z minus c naught, and z, right? So we can apply the L'Hopital's rule separately. Then what happens? Z equal to z naught, t prime z. We have n z plus z minus c naught and prime z, right? And if we substitute z equal to c naught, you have t prime z naught over n z naught. So this formula is very useful to, to calculate the residue. Can I move on? I still need time to copy. Oops. Oh, if if f z has a pore of order m, we already had right. Then the residue f z naught is limit z equals to z zero m minus one factorial t z d m minus one z minus c zero to the m f z. And I think I have done this maybe two weeks ago. So for example. If FZ is, one good example is this. Uh, so I, I can ask you to calculate the residue at C equal to one. Then you can apply this formula. So let's try to do this. This is minus z plus 2 over square, right? So the residue f z equal to 1 is. Minus c plus two square over one is one over nine. So I, I think we have enough tools to calculate the the complex integrals so actually you can check this is we have minus 1 over 9 so same result right so we can actually obtain
we have P two, right? P one plus A zero plus Blah, 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 right? And maybe A1, we have Z plus 2. So how do we find P2, P1? So this value is residue, actually, right? So we can put them together. Z plus one square, Z plus two. So this is P2, Z plus two, plus P1, Z minus one, Z plus two, A zero. This is uh, Z minus one square, Z plus two plus A1 times Z minus one square. So P2, Z plus two. This is P1 times Z square plus Z minus 2. Uh, this is a little bit difficult. Z square minus 2Z plus 1, Z plus 2, plus A1, Z square minus 2Z plus 1. Okay, so. What do we do? Z minus one square, Z plus two, P two, Z plus two, P one, Z square plus Z minus two plus A zero, Z cube minus two Z square plus Z plus Two z square minus four z plus two plus a one z square minus two z plus one. Oh, so I mean, so let's just calculate this. See what happens. Uh, we have. Highest order is A zero. Highest order is A A Z cube So G to the three is highest order, right? So we have G to the three A zero plus C square P one minus two A zero oh, oh, oh actually these two cancel each other so we don't need to worry about that and here A one right E one plus A one Plus Z, we have P2 plus P1 minus 3A0 minus 2A1 plus what else? 
we have a 2b2 minus 2b1 plus 2a0 plus a1. It's so obviously there is no C3 term in the nominator, right? So we have A0 is 0, right? And B1 plus A1 is 0. B2 plus B1 A0 is 0 minus 2A1 is 0 and 2B2 minus 2B1 plus is it plus right? plus A1 is equal to 1 A1 is minus B1. So B2 plus 3B1 is 0. 2B2 A1 minus 3B1 is 1, right? So B2 is minus 3b1 so minus 6b1 minus 3b1 is equal to 1 so b1 is minus 1 over 9 right and so say uh, the result of uh, the residue evaluation you can be, have checked with uh, the partial fraction expansion. So, so you can now have a phase in this formula, right? Okay. So le actually let's apply this uh, course's integral formula with a method to calculate the residue. Somehow, before I proceed, I have noticed that the attendance is a bit low today. So I'm thinking about having surprise quiz again. If you don't have any objection, right? OK, so I know there is one student just left out for, I don't know, went to the bathroom or not, one female student. Uh, OK. so. Lock the door. So one student uh, just went out to the bathroom, so maybe. Uh, we will really lock the door anyway. So, surprise quiz is a really surprise. Just write your name. As before. So, in a piece of paper, your serial name 
a new name. The price quiz is what is your name? I'll give you five points. and your name, and the question was, what is your name? So write your name here, okay? And this is a five-point surprise quiz. Okay, so Kari, collect. Are you ready to collect? Okay, so why don't you, why don't the student in the last floor collect the papers. Unlock the door now. Okay, so any student who didn't submit the surprise piece answer sheet, there's one more. So give it to that student. Okay, so. So we are going to do some evaluation of integral. Who's integral? And actually, this integral is quite easy because we know that tangent inverse x is 1 over x squared, right? So we already know the answer. So this is uh, tangent inverse x dx is tangent inverse x minus infinity to infinity. So when tangent inverse is infinite, that's pi over 2. Minus, minus pi over 2 is pi. We know the answer. And we can try to apply this as a cos integral. I should just let you copy the result. And it's quite amazing that this integral actually, if you take a look at this integral, and how this is related to this pi. It's a very amazing number.
or maybe so let's try to do this integral plus one then we found that there is a pole inside of this half circle right I so we know that if we do this integral C is C1 plus CR Two pi i residue f z equal i, right? So we already know that from, if you apply the Cauchy's integral formula, then this result. So on C one, C one is actually x axis, so z is simply x, right? So this integral C1 Fz dz same as this minus R to R 1 plus x squared dx. Because on this axis is C1, then z is simply x, right? On the real axis. And on CR. Let's calculate the absolute value of this CR. When you do the integral and you take the absolute value, it's always larger than taking the absolute value first, right? So C on CR, R exponential I theta. So DZ, R exponential I theta. I did theta. We have done this a long time, many times again, right? So this is uh, CR 1 plus C square. TZ is I R exponential I theta I T theta. I think all you need one I. So it's actually zero to pi. One plus C square R G theta. When denominator is smaller, it's the value is larger, right? So one plus one over one plus z square is always smaller than one over z square. See, if, if denominator becomes smaller, then actual function value can be larger. And uh, this r square is actually one over r, r over pi. So. As R goes to infinite, what happens? CR FZ TZ is less than greater than zero, right? Because one of R goes to zero when R goes to infinite. So we can say that CR FZ DZ goes to zero. When absolute value is less than zero, less than or equal to zero, that means the actual integral is going to zero, right? And this limit r goes to infinite c1 
of z dz is simply minus infinite to infinite 1 plus x squared dx. So uh, let me say this is a 1, 2, this is a 3. So the only thing we need to do is calculate the residue. This residue. Oops, sorry. So <coughs> F so maybe we can use this space as well. So F C C square one. So residue F C equal to I is, is simply you differentiate the denominator, right? So two Z over one C equal to I is one over two I. So the integral is actually this integral same as this is 2 pi i divided by 2 i is pi. Suppose he was really a smart mathematician, he could, he could do this integral just using pen, paper and pencil. Next integral is a so just need time to copy. So this part will be two, three, four. So I, I can use one my, my page very efficiently. <laughs> Economically, another example is which one? Okay, uh, this is pi two, right? Where is it? One. So this integral gives pi. If one over one plus x square, if you integrate this, you obtain pi. And say So consider this function f of z. Exponential z plus one, exponential alpha z. Okay. So this f z is a pole. Pole, right? Where? Pi i 
3 pi i, 5 pi i, etc., etc., right? So we can actually choose do this integral the same way, pi i, 3 pi i, 5 pi i. So let's start with the same as before. C1 and CR. So C is C1 plus CR. This is R minus R. So if you do this integral, R goes to infinite. CF, C, D, Z. It's again 2 pi i times residue F pi i plus f residue z3 pi i as it many sums right I mean if you disclose the integral for infinite r then we can see that this closed integral is uh, the sum of a residue for z equal pi i, 3 pi i, 5 pi i, etc., to the infinite summation. And so let's check if that trick happens. So let's start with this CR. What happens? CR exponential z plus 1, exponential alpha z, dz. So this one is less than, small, always larger than this, exponential z plus 1, exponential alpha z, dz is exponential z, exponential alpha z, dz, right? So z is r exponential i theta. So that is something like this. 0 to pi exponential r exponential alpha r r t theta. And alpha is less than 1. So pi exponential alpha minus one r times r or r over pi exponential one minus alpha r right so one minus alpha is positive. So if you compare with the R with the exponential R, which one is uh, growing rap more rapidly? Exponential function, right? So it goes to zero as R goes to infinite, right? So we can show that the circular integral will be zero. And on C1, C is x, so minus infinity to infinity, actually. Mm, I think I'm going a little bit fast. So r goes to infinite minus r to r. That is. Uh, C1 is this, right? Exponential x plus 1. Exponential alpha x dx is simply minus infinite to okay. infinite. Exponential x plus 1. Exponential alpha x dx, right? 
So our goal is the following. This integral oh, sorry. So as a result, minus infinity to infinity to exponential x plus one, exponential alpha x dx is simply two pi i residue f pi i plus residue f three pi i, etc. So f z is exponential alpha z exponential alpha z z plus one so residue f z equal pi i is how do you calculate you differentiate the denominator first right so that is exponential z exponential alpha z minus exponential pi i alpha, right? And f z equals three pi i, the same, exponential alpha z, exponential z, z equals three pi i, is again minus one exponential i, three pi i. And fc equal to five pi i is same exponential z exponential alpha z z equal to five pi i is minus one exponential i five pi i. So if you add them together, then the sum of a residue. Is simply minus of exponential pi i, one plus exponential i, two pi i, four pi i, it's infinite summation. This is an infinite geometric series over one big group, right? And you know the formula. So the answer is simple. So that is simply, minus exponential pi i times one minus two pi i, right? That's the sum, sum of a residue. So we can do the next page. I think I can memorize. Am I going too fast? Uh, I seems to going out a little bit too fast. Yes. Where? So we have alpha, right? We have alpha. So it, so this is alpha, alpha, alpha. So this is alpha, alpha. Correct? Yes. I could have made a mistake. Alpha, alpha, alpha. Correct. So, and now we also have another expression for sum of a residue minus exponential alpha pi i times one over 
1 minus exponential 2 alpha pi i, right? So this is minus 1 over exponential minus alpha pi i minus exponential alpha pi i. And this can be put into exponential alpha pi i minus exponential minus alpha pi i. So this value is actually 2i times sine alpha pi i, alpha pi, right? So our integral, exponential x plus 1, exponential alpha x dx is 2 pi i times 1 over 2i sine alpha pi is pi over sine alpha pi. It's amazing because the left integral is only contains exponential function, but when you do, do this integral, you obtain function of pi, especially When alpha is one half, what happens? Sine pi over two is equal to one, right? Then exponential <coughs> x over two, x plus one dx is pi. Left half side, I mean left, this integral is a, there's nothing related to soccer or anything with the pi, but the amazing thing is if you do this integral, you obtain pi. So there are many different expressions you get that will obtain pi. Right. For example, we have done pi. So it looks like whoever created this universe left many, many evidence of this. Uh, I don't know. It's maybe created naturally or some supernatural being or God created the universe, but. In a way, there is a, some evidence that pi, so there's something or some, some being left the signature of this universe in kind of different integral with the pi. Because pi is uh, the circumference relation to the circuit. And, and this is pi. The, the ratio between the diameter and circumference is pi only when we have a flat surface time, flat space time. If you are near the black hole, then that ratio is not pi, uh, not, not the number that we know. So this is a pi is a the ratio of the circumference divided by diameter in flat space time, called Minkowski space time. So, I don't know. So, this is actually the signature of uh, some current space time we live. And there are infinite number of integrals that produce pi, and we are going to see some of them. Maybe you can take a break for a few minutes and continue. Okay, I will turn off to my. Now. Okay. So previous example was a really difficult one, but not as difficult as this one. Okay, one minus square root of x. So we have 
plus q to 1 minus x squared in the denominator, and 1 plus x squared dx So it looks complicated, right? So this kind of integral thing that we found in Swabidon, so not even in Silliam. But Kosi has done this. So the idea is we have, let's consider some, something like uh, B. Assuming that FC is Z minus A, C minus B, one half. Assuming that we have some point C. So this is theta one, R one, theta two, R two. So Z minus A, can be written as R1 exponential I theta 1, right? And Z minus B is R2 exponential I theta 2. So FZ is R1, R2 exponential I theta 1 plus theta 2, 1 half is square root of R1, R2 exponential I theta 1 plus theta 2. And square root of R1, R2 is absolute value of Z. Then this FZ can be written as absolute value of FZ, exponential I 2 over theta 1 plus theta 2. And let's see how this theta changes with the position. So, so we can divide region by three things. This is A, this is B. And we need to have a branch because if you cross this, then the FZ is not a single value. If you, if you, if you cross this line from above to below, then there is a 2 pi i gained by this theta, theta 1, right? So this, this part you cannot cross. So let's put this one, region 1, region 2. This is region 3, 4, 5, 6. So in region one, so this is A and B. So we are look, we will be looking for this. In region one, theta one is what? Zero, right? If if you take an axis, if you think about this axis, here. Theta one is zero, right? Theta one is measured from here. So here to here is zero, right? How about theta two? Theta two, zero, right? In region two, theta one is still zero. Theta two is pi. Very good. In region three, theta one is pi. Theta 2 is pi. Region 4, same, right? Theta 1 is pi. Theta 2 is pi. Here. Theta 1 is... Theta 1 you measured from here, right? 2 pi. Theta 2 is... Still on this left side. So branch code is only for this, for the theta one, not for theta two. So as as long as this branch is concerned, this is 
this part is still zero, right? So zero. However, here, theta one is two pi, right? Theta two is, again, this is branch for theta two. So it, it has crossed this way, two pi. So we can tabulate. So theta one plus theta two over two is zero. Theta one plus theta two over two is pi over two. Theta one plus theta two over 2 is pi. Theta 1 plus theta 2 divided by 2 is pi. This is different. Theta 1 plus theta 2 divided by 2 is 3 pi over 2. Uh, theta 1 plus theta 2 over 2 is 2 pi. Yes. So three pi, add them together three pi, right? So let's summarize. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the other day. So can you, one, two, three, Four, five, six, right? We have done this way. One, two, three. The other way around. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are going to have uh, theta one plus theta two over two, zero, pi over two, pi, pi, three pi over two, two pi. So, for example, even even in this region, A, B, any place here, theta 1 plus theta 2. So, so region 3 can actually extend to not only for the, the real axis, but to Y axis. So, you can easily show that theta 1 plus theta 2 is pi. You have done this in your middle school trigonometric class, right? If you have a triangle and if you add theta 1 plus theta 2 is always pi. This is a middle school math problem. So, we can check the function. Okay. One, region two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is FZ. Exponential I zero is one, right? So F C can be this. Here F C is F C exponential I pi over two. This is FZ, exponential i pi, FZ, exponential i pi. So this is minus FZ, minus FZ. This is FZ, exponential i pi over 3 pi over 2, FZ, exponential i 2 pi is FZ. So the complex function is represented in six regions in, with a different phase. So this is actually minus i f c, and this is i f c. So you can represent this function in three different areas.
Am I going too fast, or do you understand what? Can you follow what I have been doing? So for this particular functional form, it has a, six different regions, have six different representations. But most important difference is here. It has a phase of i and minus i, and ab above and below. So, and remember that this is our integral, minus one to one, square root of one minus x square, one plus x square, dx. So we can you can regard this f c as a one minus c square. C square minus one, one half, one plus C square. And then four C is minus one to one. F C is square root of one minus X square. Can you see? On the x-axis, absolute value of fz is simply square root to 1 minus x square, 1 plus x square, right? I mean, when x is between minus 1 to 1, if you take the absolute value, then this x has to be less than 1, right? Otherwise, it becomes imaginary. So the absolute value of z on the x-axis becomes 1 over square root 1 minus x squared, 1 plus x squared. So using this knowledge, we can do this integral. Can I continue? So we are going to choose the path as follows. Minus one to one. So this is our branch code. So this is our path. C1, C2, C0, C3, C1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, C4, and And we have two poles here, i minus i, exponential i pi over 2, exponential 3 pi i over 2. So closed integral, c, c is c1 plus c2 plus 0 plus c3 plus c4. So that is C1, Fc, so Fz was defined as z square minus 1, 1 half, 1 plus z square over 1. Tz plus C2, C3, 
zero. C three F C D Z plus C four F Z D Z. So this is minus R. This is R. And this is C1 is going inside and C3 is going outside, right? So they, they will cancel each other. That's obvious, right? Because the same function here is uh, FC minus FC minus FC. So F has the same value. FC has the same value on this C1 and C4, right? And this integral direction is uh, one is going inside, one is going outside. So it's zero, right? So C1 dz plus C4 FC DZ is equal to zero because on C1 and C4 FC is the same FC exponential i pi. So on C1 and C4 FC has the same value. It doesn't change, right? Here. So one is going inside, one is going outside. So apparently this integral will cancel. The zero integral, oh, sorry. The zero integral zero as rho goes to zero. And I will leave this as a homework. So you have seen how to prove that, right? And of course, this will go to zero. So this is what's homo. You can check this at home. So let's just concern these two integrals. So we, we already have a lot of zeros. So the zero integral is zero, the CR integral is zero, and these two are zero, right? And of course, this whole integral is 2 pi i. We have two residue. Residue exponential i pi over 2. Residue exponential i 3 pi over 2. And sometimes they ask this problem in quantum chemistry too. So, it's, uh, if you can do this integral well, it's uh, one stone, two birds, right? It's so easy. So since most of the integral is zero, so let's just continue this two. C2 and C3. So all the integrals are zero. So this is our branch cut. So this C2 C2 and C3. So on C2 FC is what? Absolute value 
times i, right? And on C4, Fc is absolute value times minus i. So, C2, Fz, dz plus C3, Fz, dz is actually minus 1 to 1 square root of 1 minus x square 1 plus x square dx and we have i here, right? Plus c3 is 1 to minus 1 dx so we have minus i square root of 1 minus x square 1 plus x square so we have 2 over i, actually minus 1 to 1, dx, square root 1 minus x square, 1 plus x square. Now we need to calculate the residue. So residue f exponential i pi over 2 uh, is simply this, right? FC, remember that Fz is c square minus 1, 1 plus c square. So absolute value of this is uh, 1 minus x square, c square. Fc. and 2i. So this is, we have i, right? i, 2i. One over minus square root of <coughs> i. So one minus c square is two, right? One minus c square i is two. Residue f exponential i is three pi over two is minus i square root of two minus two i is again minus. Oh, we have two minus two root of two. So if we add them together, we have minus over square root of 2, right? So 2 over i times i is 2 pi i times uh, minus square root of 2. So I is square root of 2 over pi. So again, we have a pi. Let me just check if my answer is correct. Just check. Right, pi over two root of two. So it's amazing, right? So that means minus one to one, 
root 1 minus x square, 1 plus x square, dx. It's again okay. pi over square root of 2. So again okay, pi. So actually, Cauchy has done this integral in 200 years ago, almost 300 years ago, just using paper and pencil. So for those uh, mathematicians for 18th century, this complex variable theory was like uh, their own supercomputer. They, they used hand and uh, pencil doing all the calculations. And this may have something to do with, uh, again, the military problems that he was assigned to solve. Something like a gravitational interaction or modification of something. Russia, the Soviet Union, and during the 40s, 50s, 60s, until not even 80s, they didn't have a good computer. They were quite lacking in electronics engineering. So the Soviet mathematicians tabulated a lot of integrals using the complex variables. And I think 10,000 integrals. Rizik, it's a very famous book by Rizik. Uh, you, you can check for Google. It's a table of integrals. Then you can, you can find almost 10,000 integrals done by hand using complex variable theory. So you can check. Table, I think it's a table of integrals. Can you check at Google? Rizik, R-Y-Z-I-K. He, he compiled a lot of integrals. And, and that's one of the reasons, even, even though we have a very good computer these days, but sometimes it's handy to know the theory, to develop a theory, I mean, if you want to develop a new theory for some, some new subject, then sometimes still you need to know some kind of complex integrals, doing some analytical integration. That's uh, things. Been messy, but I think it's really handy. And I'll just show one more example before I proceed. So can I continue? So if you take a representation of fz as a z half 1 plus z square, then we can see that z to the half is not a single value of the function. So we need to have a branch, something like here. So what we can do is this integral. And we have a 
pole hat here and here, right? Minus i exponential i pi over 2 exponential i 3 pi over 2. Let's say C is C1 plus CR plus C2 plus 0. And then this closed integral C, FZ, DZ will be 2 pi I times residue F exponential i pi over 2 plus residue f exponential i 3 pi over 2 and 0 f z d z So I will give this as a ho uh, I'm not going to show this here as a homework. You can do that. You can check, right? So we are only concerned with uh, the C1 and C2 integral. So on C1, Z is X. So Fc is simply x one half one plus x square. On the other hand, on C two, z is x times exponential two pi i, right? Because you have to circle around this origin. So here we have a face with a two pi i. So f f z. Fc is simply minus x one half one plus x squared because when you have a two pi i with the one half is exponential pi i gives minus sign, right? So, so again as before, we have minus sign here. So let's just focus on this. So C1 and C2. So C1, this integral, rho goes to 0, r goes to infinite, from rho to r. This is a uh, 1 plus x square, x 1 half dx, right? This is c1 integral plus r goes to 0, r goes to infinite, rho goes to 0. We have r to rho minus x to the 1 half, 1 plus x square dx, right? But this minus sign actually changes the upper bound and lower bound of the integral. So we have uh, twice over 0 to infinite 1 plus x squared x 1 half dx. And residue is so fz is z to the 1 half 1 plus z squared. So residue f Exponential pi i over 2 is actually what? Exponential 2 pi, oh sorry, pi i over 4, and this is 2i, right? And residue f exponential 3 pi i over 2 is exponential 
3 pi i over 4 and minus 2i. So if you add them together, this is more like this. So sum of residue is a 2i over 1 exponential 4 pi i minus exponential 3 pi i over 4. So that is 1 over 2i cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4 minus cosine pi over 3 pi over 4 minus i sine 3 pi over 4. So let's check all sine tangent cosine. So sine pi i will be cancelled by this because they are same sign, right? So this is uh, 2i twice of square root of 2. So I square root of 2. So, two I is two pi I times I square root of two, right? So, I is pi over square root of two. Okay, in pi. So, we have a lot of signatures for pi in the integral. It's really amazing. Uh, there are many other integrals which will be very exciting, but maybe we will stop here for now and maybe break for a few minutes. So this is the uh, end of our topic for complex variable. And the final topic, I have to think about many other topics. Usually I cover the period series in the in the, the last part. But uh, actually I covered this in the spring semester. So how many of you have taken my class in the spring semester? So I, I think half of you know the period series and period transform. And so I decided to cover Partial differential equations, which is also quite important for engineering problems. So as a, la as a last topic for this semester, I'm going to cover that. So let's take a break for a few minutes before we continue.
분모를 그냥 FZ라고 써야 돼. 그러니까 엄밀하게 말하면 그 G 스퀘어 마이너스 원의 이분의 일승. Partial differential equation is actually some kind of equations. Containing partial derivatives. So in the spring semester, we consider the ordinary differential equation. There's only one independent variable and one dependent variable. And the partial differential equations has uh, several independent variables. Have several independent variables. So in this semester, I think the, let's consider the simplest case. So we have only two or three independent variables and one dependent variable. So for example, let's say, assume z as a dependent variable. And x, y as an independent variable. For example, if z is ax plus a square y plus p, a and b constant, then this function satisfies, so we need, you would like to know. What kind of PD which Z satisfies? This example is school is find a solution, but we start the opposite way. So we start with some kind of solution and then find out what kind of equation it satisfies, for example. So partial x, partial z is a, right? And partial y, partial z is 2ay, 2a square. And you can say y is uh, partial x, partial z square, right? 
So partial y, partial z is 2y, partial x, partial z square. It's a PD. It's partial differential equations for z in terms And still, <coughs> I think I, I think I'm going a little bit too fast. So, for example, another one is y. Y phi x minus c t plus psi x minus x plus c t. So, phi and psi are arbitrary, arbitrary functions. So, what is the PD? PD, or PD for phi. So let's say x minus ct as a u, x plus ct as a v. Then partial x, partial y. Is what? You can apply the chain rule. So partial u, partial phi, partial x, partial u, plus partial v, partial phi. Psi, partial x, partial v, right? So this is uh, simply partial u, partial phi, plus partial phi, partial psi. And partial t, partial y is same as before. Partial u, partial phi, partial t, partial u, plus Partial V, partial Psi, partial T, partial Psi. So, this is minus C, right? Partial U, partial Phi, plus C, partial V, partial Psi. You can differentiate once more. So partial x square, partial square y is partial u square, partial square phi, partial x, partial u plus partial v square, partial phi, partial x, partial u is what? Again, Partial u square, partial square phi, partial v square, partial square phi. And partial t square, 
Pashas Kirwai is minus C Pashal U square Pashal square phi Pashal T Pashal U plus a C Partial three square, partial five. I think I have a minus sign somewhere. Partial t, partial three is actually minus minus c square. Partial u square, partial square five plus partial three square, partial square psi. So if you compare with these two. Then what do we get? From these two, we have partial x square, partial y equal one over c square, partial t square, partial square y. And this is a very famous equation called wave equation. And I think I have covered a little bit of this verification toward the end of a vector analysis. When you have a call, a cross call of electric field from Maxwell's equation, you obtain this uh, verification. So this is really interesting. That particular partial differential equation has uh, this solution. And so let's consider the property of one particular solution. So say. Say y y is a sine x plus c t. So this is the x axis. This is the y axis. So at some point x. If you take a look at this solution at some particular point x naught, what happens if t goes, if time goes by, the value of y is changing along this axis, right? This function changes, sinusoidal function. So for fixed x zero, a sine x zero plus c t. What happens? When t is zero, it is a certain value. If t is increasing, it oscillates this way, right? On the other hand, if we fix t zero, so this is a fix zero, fix t equal t zero, what happens? Y a sine x plus c t zero. Then x changes, y always changes, right? Like a sine function. So if we fix t equal t0, x equal x0, then we have a fixed value, right? A sine x0 plus c t0, right? After a certain time, time, say this is y0, t is t0 plus delta t, uh, not delta, some change, say, Tau x is x zero plus capital X, then y becomes a sine 
x0 plus ct0 plus x tau x plus c tau so whenever x plus c tau is 2 pi what happens when x plus c tau is 2 pi then y0 is rep repeated, right? So, assuming that x0, this is x0, so this is a value y0 at x equal x0, t equal t naught, and the same point can be reproduced here when tau c tau plus x is 2 pi right so if you throw the stone then same height can be reproduced at later point a later time so that is pattern is propagating along space time you can regard this as a pattern so that means pattern is y0 value is propagating along x-axis, x-axis. So that means the same value can be reproduced at some later position, a later time. The next is t tau plus c x c tau plus x is 2 pi, or maybe integer value. So that means some functional value is found at different location at different time. Same value can be found, right? So propagation speed is minus c. So propagating actually along the negative axis. So that's the discovery that uh, allows Hertz to design the microwave communications. So wave equation. So there's a wave phenomenon. And so before I proceed, just to summarize some of the results obtained in the spring semester for the ordinary value, ordinary differential equations, two things. The summary. Anybody remembers that if dx dy px y is qx, it can be solved using integra <coughs> integrating factor. So you. that dx d h y is h q is uh, h dx d y plus dx d h y so if we divide by h everywhere we have dx d y plus 1 over h dx d h y is q x and this is actually dx d l n h is uh, p x. So p x h x l n h is p x prime d x prime or hx is exponential x px prime dx prime so hy hy simple integral hx prime qx prime, dx prime. 
<coughs> is exponential x px prime tx x prime double prime qx prime tx prime so y plus some constant so y is actually exponential minus x px prime tx prime and blah blah so anybody remembers this integra integrating factor formula learned from the spring semester no so we are going to use that to derive some of the result and another result i like to recall is the following also you can check for home homework check the formula so you can dig out, you can download some of the notes in the spring semester. Then I'm going to use the result for the deriving the solutions for partial differential equations next week. And so maybe we can stop today. So before we proceed. What do you think? ブーチベガーザーブーイラキーのトゥルジョンポセヨ。けど、1チャーミンバンジョンスクエアウィンバンジョンスクエアワールドマンティオケジョンジョンチョケセヨ。ブーチベガーザーブーイラキーのトゥ